Okay, so I'm all set up here to start making my cuts uh, to get the general shape of my tenon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the circular saw, I'm going to bring it over here to the end. Now it may, it's a little difficult for you guys to see on the cam, on the screen here, but I'm going to set the depth of my saw blade so it's just above my reference line here on the end. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to cut, make a series of what are called bread cuts along here and it's going to make it much easier for me to remove the material. Now what I'll do to remove this material is I just take my mallet Now, I didn't go all the way down to my line because I don't want to run the risk of taking too much material off. So what I did was I stayed above the line a little bit here, and now you come in with your chisel and start cleaning it all up. Don't necessarily need a mallet. Again, a good sharp chisel will take care of it for you. I'm using the bevel of this chisel, again, like we talked about when we're working on the column, in a couple different ways. I'm using it always to my advantage. So now what I want to do is I want to come down here, I want to check Keep an eye on that reference line. I don't want to take anything past it. So as you can see what I'm doing is I've got a lot of control on the chisel by keeping a thumb on it like this and holding the material. And it gives you a nice smooth finish. The cleaner your cuts are, the easier it's going to be during assembly. So now that this side is done, I've taken it down to my reference line, I want to roll the timber over.
I'm going to do the same on this side. cleaning it all up with a chisel. I want to reestablish my reference line on the sides of this tenon, on the sides of this tenon here. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is bring them up. And I'm going to mark them out again. Same thing. Okay. So now I've got to take away the material on both the top and bottom of the tenon. So I'm going to do this the same way. The only thing I've got to contend with now is this angle here. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a straight cut down on both sides and then I'll remove these little angles with a chisel I right hand. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to set up my saw. In this case it's to a depth of just shy of one inch. I don't want to go past my line. Now make a series of cuts again. Clean it up here with the chisel again.
So now I need to clean up this part that I missed with the angle here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take my chisel and work straight down the table. It's important to keep this cheek nice and level and smooth because if you don't, it won't sit tight to the face of your column. again and repeat that process on the back side. I want to check my saw depth. Make my cuts. Again, clean it with the chisel. So again, need to get this corner out here that was left by the saw. So all I'm going to do is just nice and easy. Chisel this material later. Like I said, you want to keep the cheek of this as uniform and as smooth as possible so it sits nice and tight to your column face. The only other step to completing this tenon is doing what's called easing the edges or putting a chamfer on these edges. If you have these real crisp corners, it's going to make it difficult to try and drive this, um, drive the column and the cross beam together. So what is done traditionally in timber framing is you can either use a block plane to ease the edges, and you would go at about a 45 degree angle and you can just Run it down through. And 
and that eases the edges a little bit. But you can also go back to your chisel and just nice and easy chamfer those corners. You want to make sure to get all of the edges. And there you go, one complete tenant.